And welcome back to Ladies Can We Talk. This is Debbie Georgettis. We're in our second hour round table with two of my buds, Mar- <laughs> who we're talking with her, Mari Sullivan, Drinda Randall. And in this segment, we have on a guest, and I barely got to introduce her prior to the uh, in the last segment. We are we have on the line with us tonight Rebecca Hagelin, and she is the author of a new book, 30 Ways in 30 Days to Strengthen Your Family. So, hello, Rebecca. Hey, thank you so much for having me on, Debbie. I'm so glad to have you. We're so glad to have you. And I got your new book on my iPad, so I have that up in front of me. But before I launch into talking about that book, first of all, Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. You too. <laughs> thank you. We've been uh, we've been talking a little bit about Mother's Day, but you know, I love in America that we have groups of people like you and, and groups like uh, Dr. James Dobson's Family Talk Board, people talking about the idea that families matter. It's a, you know, it's a harder thing sometimes for politicians to talk about, but advocacy groups talking about why family matters. So actually just tell us, if you would, a little bit about your background in in your public speaking and public life uh, advocating for families. Oh, sure. Well, thank you again for having me on. And you're right, families matter. I mean, there's an old saying that says, as the family goes, so goes the nation. You know, I don't think truer words were ever spoken. And for whatever reason, early in my life, actually, when I was a senior in high school, I started studying issues of the family, um, studying social science in college, as well as journalism, and then have spent my entire adult life working to promote things that advance the family and that help bring about families that are strong, uh, fighting government intrusion into our family lives, trying to encourage the spiritual development of family. Um, I spent about seven years as the vice president of the Heritage Foundation, uh, working on all of these issues as well as as the broad portfolio that the Heritage Foundation um, addresses. And then at other groups concerned Women for America um, back in the 80s and writing a column on it. And this is my third book which, um, you know, the purpose in my heart of this book is to really give moms and dads practical help on how they can strengthen their bonds with their children, uphold the principles of the Judeo-Christian um, teaching and life that are actually joyful principles and fight a culture that's gone stark raving mad. I love that. Okay, I um I don't know how much you want to dive in the substance of your book. I love what you do. And you know, I just I guess I want to get right into the meat of one thing you wrote about because I think it's really interesting. You have a chapter called Learn How to Have Meaningful Discussions with Your Children. I mean, the title alone kind of jarred me a little bit, honestly, Uh, and in part because we have three children who are, in fact, our our one son came with me tonight. He's he's here uh, and for Mother's Day and he's our kids are in their uh, mid 20s. But anyway, um, that is one of the hardest things, I think, in is a combination of busyness in families and a lot of activities. And you feel like time together constitutes interaction, but it doesn't. Uh, and and a lot of social media temptation. So uh, talk a little bit about what you advised for people, how to have meaningful discussions with your children. Well, the best way to do that is to actually start when they're young and never stop. So the first word is to parents of younger children, is that every day you sit down and you talk to them, not just about your day and what Jimmy did, but what do you think about what Jimmy did, or what did you do today that you regret? for the day. You know, one of the tips is doing this around a family table. What is something you're very excited about that happened today? Or what would you have changed about your day? Starting a daily conversation with your children about things that are uh, principle and life changing. And if you start when they're young and you always interact with them, and when I say interact with them, I mean look them in the eye sit down, give them a comfort zone. My, my daughter who's written um, a reflection at the end of each chapter of this book, she's 24 years old and is kind of given the reality check. She says in one of the chapters, a home is where the walls come down and the souls come out and the house is filled with love and it's a safe place to have discussions and to make mistakes. And so the idea is if you start when they're younger, then when they get into those uh, rebellious teenage years that many children go through and the separation is very natural for parents, 
they're more likely to just think it's normal to come home and talk to you about what's going on in their lives. Um, the challenge for parents with older children who've never had meaningful discussions is a little bit harder. And so one of the things that I urge parents to do is actually outline step by step in another chapter of the book. It's called Write a Letter to Your Teen. And, and these, because they're both communication devices, the communications between the spoken word and the written word, sometimes if you've never been a communicator with your children and you realize you are, the first thing to do to open that conversation is sit down and write a clear declaration in your own handwriting of your love for them, of your regrets for not being more involved in their lives, of your hopes and dreams, uh, something about you they never knew, and and. And you start off by writing that letter draft after draft so you feel really good about it, and then you give it to them, and then you can sit down and have a discussion with them about that letter. Um, and then, of course, there, there are many other ways that communicate or, or facilitate discussions with families, these meaningful discussions. One of them is the family dinner table. I mentioned that a few minutes ago, that we cannot underestimate the power of having family dinners together. And there were some studies that we looked at at the Heritage Foundation that revealed that children who have dinner three or more times per week with their parents report stronger emotional health, they're less likely to get in trouble in school, they have better grades than children who don't because they're connecting with their parents over a meal. So there are lots of other tips in there as well. Yeah, I just love it. I'm uh, looking at all the uh, chapter titles, and there are so many. I was thinking, what I was listening, and I was also thinking which one to go to next, and it's very hard to figure because they all have really, uh, I mean, I just... I think it's a really noble thing for you to have written a book like this because, you know, I, there's a tendency in our society to feel like you should, everyone should kind of mind your own business and don't tell other people how to do their life and don't say anything. Uh, to, and, and these are just, you know, it's like we turn to experts in every other field of our lives, you know, uh, whether it's health or, um, you know, how to fix your sink or whatever. We, and so the idea that there is expertise arising on people who studied families is really kind of a cool idea. Well, I appreciate it. I mean, this came out of, I wrote the first book several years ago, and it was about, in general, the philosophy behind why it's important for parents to confront the culture. And when I went on a speaking tour, what I found was that at the end of the speech, I always take Q&A, I started getting people saying at every event, I understand what you're saying, but what do I do about internet usage? Or what do I do about the way my daughter wants to dress? And so I started seeing the common questions that were asked all over the country, and I kept a list of them. And then I put 30 of them together, and then I started doing the research uh, through my column it, that I had at the time. I asked parents to sh- share their success stories. So, hey, I am not a fount of wisdom. I have just pulled together information from a lot of sources. From You mentioned Dr. Dobson. Dr. Meg Meeker is another one. Um, parents' real-life stories, my personal stories. And put together practical how-tos for some of the most common things that parents face when they are trying to raise children that tower above the culture. And doing so with joy and love. Because there is freedom and joy and love in the Christian life. And we tend to make it a list of no's. And when we make our lives a list of do's and don'ts, and that's the end of it, our children will rebel. So there's something in there that's really important in every chapter that draws us back to the purpose is to raise children who love God and who we have a strong relationship with and who love their neighbors as they love themselves and experience joy in life. We're speaking tonight with Rebecca Hagelin, the author of a new book that is out, and we're talking about her book, 30 Ways and 30 Days to Strengthen Your Family. We have one minute left in this segment. Dorinda had a quick question, Look, I think. Well, mm-hmm. you just kind of went over it, so I kind of uh, have <laughs> posed my question a little late. But at the same time, you've probably you've gotten this question quite a bit, and one of them is, what do you, what have you done in your own child's life when it comes to uh, social media. I've got a 12 year old and I know that he loves to, to look at the social media and look at my phone and all of that stuff. What do you do to regulate all of that? 
in 30 seconds. Um, 30 <laughs> seconds. Okay. And first of all, you have to deal with each child according to their age and their maturity level, number mm-hmm. one. Right. Number two, if your child has social media access, you say, I'm paying for the phone, I pay for the electricity, I pay for the house, you do it in. So I will have your passcodes to all of your social media sites. And um, you tell them the rules and you give them safety tips that are on the book. I love that. Rebecca Hagelin, thank you so much for thank calling you. in tonight. Hey, thank you. It's been a blessing to be with you. We're speaking with Rebecca Hagelin, author of 30 Ways in 30 Days to Strengthen Your Family. Come back after the break.